Hi and welcome to my channel. Today we are gonna be talking about some toys that we have that I think are worth the money. So if you are new to my channel, I created this channel as a homeschooling resource to give you curriculum ideas, organizational ideas, and ways to invite Christ into your homeschool space. So if you're interested in those things, please hit that subscribe button and let's talk about toys. So I wanted to mention just a few things before we start talking about these toys. The first thing is I'm putting this video out right now so that if you wanna get these toys as Christmas presents, hopefully you'll have time to do that. And I'll make sure everything is linked down below. Most of these toys are going to be for ages about four to nine-ish. That's the age ranges of my kids. And they all still play with most of these toys. So just something to note there. The second thing is I'm sitting on the floor, which I don't normally do, but I'm surrounded by bins of toys and it's just a little easier for me to be on the floor going over them. And the third thing is I don't really like toys that don't serve a purpose. And I've mentioned this before, but I study human development in school. That's what my bachelor's degree is in. And I read a ton of books about human development, about parenting and research and all that kind of stuff. And so it's kind of a very important topic to me. <laughs> and so toys in most of these books, it talks about toys and how toys, to put it bluntly, this is a blunt Jackie interpretation of all these books, toys are ruining our kids. Let me explain what that is supposed to mean. So too many toys is ruining our kids. First of all, if your kids have way too many toys, get rid of some of them. Don't get them as many for Christmas. Whatever it is, if they have too many toys, they become overwhelmed. They're not able to use their imagination and just have a fun time. As soon as you get rid of some of them, they'll start playing with them more. They can be more creative. It's just too much. If there's too many toys, they can't, toys don't serve the proper purpose that they need to if there's too many of them. The second thing is toys that make noise. There are a few of them that are good. Most of them just drive us crazy anyway, so I don't even know why we buy them. But a lot of them are not very good for kids. So a few things about toys that make noise is that they tell kids what to do. So if it's a tablet or some sort of toy maybe that has you stick something in it but it's telling you what to do, they can be helpful in some ways, but they also aren't letting kids use their imagination and try to figure out how to make something with the toy or do something with the toy because the toy is just telling them what to do. Or like the little cars they sit in, those cars. As a child, I always wanted one, we never had one. And all of our friends had them, you know, the battery powered ones are like much better now. I see them all the time. Again, I'm not saying you can't get one of those, but they take your kids around everywhere. They don't leave any sort of thing for the kids to figure out, to problem solve, to use their imagination, especially if you're the one now steering it, because you can do that. The parents can steer the whole thing. The kids don't do anything. They're not even exercising while they use it. So those are just a few pointers <laughs> about toys and you're probably like, turn the video off, we're done, we don't wanna listen to this. So the, the point I wanna make is be intentional with the toys you buy. Make sure it is something meaningful, something that's gonna actually teach your kids, encourage imagination, encourage problem solving skills, and just lets them use their bodies and kind of explore the world instead of something that is going to tell them what to do and just be really loud and noisy, overstimulating, all those types of things. So I have a few suggestions for some toys. I don't know how many I have here, maybe six. I'm, maybe there's more. <laughs> we'll see when we get there how many there is. I just started making a list the other day and I was like, wait a second, <laughs> this would be a good video to share with you. So these are toys that we have gotten that I have kept. I have become somewhat of a minimalist. I won't say that I'm a complete minimalist because I don't want to make minimalists upset, but I have become somewhat of a minimalist when it comes to toys and I don't like to have things that aren't meaningful, but these are toys my kids play with consistently. They grab these over any other toys that we have. These are the ones that they want to play with. These are the ones they have the most fun with. So let's start talking about these toys because I know that's all you really care about. So let's do it. Okay, so number one, the first one I want to share is the one we've had the longest <laughs> and it's still here. So these are blocks. They're like the Duplo Mega Blocks. I don't know if you call them Duplo 
blocks, but they're mega blocks. Anyways, let me hold a few up and I'll make sure to have some different footage so you can see us playing and building stuff with them. But these are the blocks that they're the bigger size ones. The small ones are good as well. We have a few of those or like train sets that use the small blocks that are like a step up from Legos or kind of in between. But these are the best. We have had these since my oldest turned one and he's almost nine. So this was something that was given to him as a Christmas present, his very first Christmas. And can I just say something about spending money at Christmas? That first Christmas we had with him, we didn't have very much money. We had just finished our undergrad. We moved across the country and we're getting a graduate degree. We had just bought our house and we had no money. It was basically like, are we gonna be able to keep our house warm through the winter? It, we were just the lowest bank account ever. And uh, maybe not ever, you know, but for us it was extremely, extremely low. And we weren't gonna buy Christmas presents. We had no money to do so. And so the only Christmas presents that he got that year were one of those little cars you can sit on and roll back and forth, which those are also great toys. But also the other thing, these blocks, okay? <laughs> these blocks from grandma's. Each grandma gave him a gift and those were the presents he got for Christmas. I don't even think we bought him anything that year for Christmas. And we still have them because my kids love them so much. They pull them out, they can build stuff with them. If you have a lot of kids that enjoy playing with them, you might wanna get two sets because once they start playing with them all, there's just not enough and then they, and then they fight over them. Goodness gracious, kids, just have fun and get along, please. But these are just so fun. They get to have those early like engineering skills and something these are great for too is they're so big. And so for kids like young toddlers or even like I said, one year olds younger than that, they're safe because you know they can chew on them, which is fine. I don't care, they can chew on them, but they're not gonna swallow them. Hopefully not, unless their mouth is absolutely humongous. And then they also can use them very easily because their fine motor skills aren't super great at that age. And these are big and a lot easier for them to maneuver, but also to enhance those fine motor skills. So I think those blocks, they're great. They're a great present. They're totally worth the money. And I would buy them again in a heartbeat. I didn't buy them the first time, but <laughs> I would buy them. If I didn't have them, I would buy them. <laughs> so check out those blocks. Okay, number two, the next thing I wanna mention that we've had almost as long as those blocks are these. These are the mag formers, I think. They're similar to like, there's magnetiles that are also out there. We don't have those, but these are the mag former ones, so they're different colors. But you can build all sorts of things, right? They have tons of magnets. One thing I will say about these, they're very, very expensive. They're over $100, usually for a large set. You know, one that if you have several kids or whatever to really build stuff, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit pricey, but they are worth it. We have had them for years and we still have quite a bit of them. We have, you know, I think there's a few more downstairs. I just brought these bins up from the basement from all my kids' toys, but I think there's some more downstairs. So we've had these for years and we've lost a few in our fire chute in our really old house because my kids like to stick stuff down those. And I think in the radiator holes, not inside the radiator, but down in the hardwood floor. But other than that, I think we still have a lot of them. And these are amazing. Like I said, they're expensive. Look for a dill, or if you don't care, then I guess spend the money. They also have a set. I don't have the set, but I thought it was cool. I just saw it from a homeschooling friend this last week that has a little bit more architectural type stuff. Like you can build bridges and things like that with it. I think it has like some different arches and things like that with magnets. So I thought that one would be really cool. Again, expensive, but still worth it. If you bought one toy this year, I feel like this would be worth it. It would be so worth it. And I think something else that's great about this is, you know, you have your different shapes. So it's teaching shapes, it's teaching colors to younger children. It's also teaching the strength of like triangles. They get to build stuff and problem solve and see, okay, if I build it this way with triangles, then it's a lot stronger. So they're learning architecture. Is that the right word? I think so. <laughs> I don't know why it sounds weird right now. Engineering skills, they're learning so many different skills. And when it falls apart, that's great, guys. It's so, so important to have toys that allow your kids to problem solve. 
And yes, eventually you can help them figure it out if they need to, but encourage them to go back and figure it out themselves or to try again because problem solving is so, so important to be learning. And it's more important for them to learn to problem solve at a young age when the consequences are very small compared to when they're older and something happens and they just don't know how to handle the unexpected. So these toys are great. I would highly recommend them. My kids love them. My girls, let me show you a fun trick they love. They love to put them in their hair. See? <laughs> it's so fun. There's so many things you can do with them. So they love to use them as little clips and occasionally I think they can get them stuck to their ears like earrings. So go buy those toys. <laughs> just because they're worth it, not because not because I'm telling you to do it, but they're gonna teach your kids a lot. Okay, the third thing I wanted to mention, the third toy that is worth the money is these marble tubes. Sorry, the reflection is right there. <laughs> you see the camera, ta-da! I'll take them out of the box. But we got these three, maybe almost four years ago. So here's just a few of them. This is the stand, this is the little twirly thing. There's tons of different sets. This is not the original Marble Works brand. Uh, they do have some of those on Amazon. I'll link a whole bunch of different options for all of these that I think are good. Obviously, I haven't tried all of them, but as a child, we had the original, I think, Marble Works that you would have probably seen on an infomercial or something back then. Anyways, those things were great and they had a little jump. This one doesn't have a jump, but you'd go down the chute and then land on the other side and that was fun. You had to figure out the right like trajectory. You're learning some math and physics maybe <laughs> there and all these fun things. So I, I love these because again, they get to build something. As you can see, there's a common theme running through all of these. They're very STEM related with building and that kind of stuff. Those are the toys that I think are really worthwhile and teach our kids the most are these kind of toys. So even with young kids, I think these are great. I keep the bag of marbles. I think this one came with this big bag of marbles. I keep it up in a cupboard that's high. And I personally would only give one marble per kid when they were playing, not to my like babies. When they were babies, I didn't give them a marble. And sometimes I only let them play with this during nap time. So then I didn't have to worry about the teeny, teeny kids getting into the marbles. But at least if they only had one marble each, I knew exactly where all the marbles were. It was easy to keep track instead of a billion marbles. And you can do a billion marbles. Just make sure you're keeping track of all the marbles. And so I would just give them one marble each and they build something and had a lot of fun. Another thing with this is you can't, I don't know, I guess you can have more than one kid building something at a time. It's just kind of hard because not all the pieces are there, you know, they do get creative because they have to, there's not enough pieces for them to all build or at least the same types of pieces. So you could get a couple sets if you have a lot of children or whatever, or you know, they have to share or play with something else, whatever, you can, you can make it work. But I just think, again, it's a lot of fun and it doesn't always work, right? You build something and something's a little off, like it's crooked or the marble's not going down all the way and you have to problem solve you have to go figure out what the problem is and then get the marble to go down. And then you get to try different routes. You just get to experiment with it. Like obviously they send some instructions, which are long gone now, of ones you can do some examples, but you get to experiment and have fun and be creative and use your imagination. So I love the marble tubes. I would recommend those as a wonderful toy for this Christmas. The fourth thing that I think is worth it, this toy is a good one, is Lincoln Logs. <laughs> Again, the reflection is it's not good. And these, I, I love. These totally bring me back to my childhood. I don't know if I personally had Lincoln Logs, but it just reminds me of elementary school. Because I feel like in kindergarten or first grade, I don't know, we had Lincoln Logs that we could play with. So this is just one option of a set. There's lots of different sets. So this is, the one we have and again it gives instructions we don't have those but you can find them online i have found pdfs for them online so my kids can still build what goes with this set but they can also get creative and build their own thing it doesn't have to be this set so this one you know it has some roof pieces these are also roof pieces for a different type of roof so i like how it's kind of again that creativity of Things don't have to just be one way. They can be a different way. This can also make a roof. They have doors, right? They have the windows and different things. And then these are tricky for kids to figure out as well. You know, they have to alternate them. 
and get them to stack. But then if you want to make a door or a window, you know, without even using these, I don't think we had these when I was a kid, you just made your own. Anyway, and so they have to get creative and think of how to do it. They have to look at it and figure out the structure and problem solve again. Guys, there's a lot of <laughs> similarities that run through all of these toys because they're very important to childhood and just letting kids have fun and being able to explore the world on their own. So these are these are great. And like I said, you can buy different kits. I think there is the Lincoln Log brand and they come in the cute like vintage tube. <laughs> which could be cool, but expensive. So there are a lot of options that aren't that, <laughs> that are also a lot of fun. So you can go get your kids some Lincoln Logs and let them start building. Okay, the fifth thing I wanted to mention is trains. I feel like trains are so very good. We did have one of those like train tables with the wooden track when we, we're, when our kids were a little bit younger and we lived in Connecticut, but we moved and I wasn't gonna haul that thing all the way to California. So we didn't, <laughs> we got rid of it, gave it to someone else. But those are also really good. Again, just helping with building and that there's different ways to build a track. You don't have to build it the same way. These ones, I think we've had for a couple years. I can't remember. And these ones are a lot of fun. Let me grab a few pieces. So this is for the bridge. So it does not hook together like that, obviously. What train is gonna go over that? So just ignore that. But these ones are a little easier to hook together than some of the train sets we've had in the past. So they just go like this. And these are like those Duplo blocks I was talking about. So here's an example, this size that is also really good for kids. And there's a lot of good sets out there. So they can use this and they can build a whole bunch of things. It has, this is the box car. I don't know if the train's in here. My kids are playing with it the other day but it just has a battery and can go around the track as well. And there's little pieces with this one that you can put down to stop the train. If it hits that piece, it will stop or it'll play music or different things like that. So that's kind of fun for this one. But again, they just get to see a different way to build something. They have to figure out, okay, the track's going this way and I need this track to come over and hit that track. So how am I gonna do that? You know, and it might take a second. They might have to experiment and figure it out but they will eventually and they're just so much better for it. They just become such good problem solvers and really good at using their imagination to create some sort of story as they build something. So I think train tracks are wonderful. Obviously not all of them are created equal, but I feel like this one is a pretty good one. Okay, so the sixth thing I wanted to mention, I'm gonna kind of put two toys together here, are Tinker Toys right here. And then I don't, I honestly don't know what these ones are called. They're STEM toys. I'll find some down there, down there. I'll link some down below for you. So these ones are fun because they just come with these different shapes. I think originally the instructions show you can make a car, but you can screw stuff in. It comes with the little screws. So helping those fine motor skills. And then it comes with tons of these little pieces right here. And you can build all sorts of things with them. My girls love to build cameras out of these. Okay, this was originally for my son. It was from a few years ago, I think for Christmas. And he built the cars and stuff out of it, but my little, little, I was talking to this. But my girl loves to build a camera out of it and she'll walk around and take pictures. So if you let them use these types of toys, they get super creative and it's really fun to see what they can come up with. And the same with the Tinker toys. We had these, again, kindergarten or something. It just brings me back. I feel like they were wooden. I think they have some that are wooden available online. I'm gonna like stab myself in the eye with this. But these are a lot of fun, good like engineering type stuff too. Even if your kids aren't interested in, interested in engineering and you know, if they're little, they don't even know what the heck that is. But it's just still good for them helping them to build different things and imagine what they could build and how they can make it work. My kids like to build windmills out of these. It has these little paddles. Here's one that's sort of built right here. And so that's really fun and they make them so they can spin, like they can hand spin them and things. So these are really cool. They've kind of been through a lot and get lost a little bit easier because they're small and my kids don't leave them in a bin like they're supposed to. But I think those are another great toy. So I'll link a few things related to these kind of toys that are STEM as well that I we have had in the past and my kids have just used them a lot and really enjoyed using them. So those are my toys that I think are worth the price. 
I think they're totally worth it because not only do they last a long time, we've had them a lot of these for years, but they are worth the price because they teach your kids so much more than a lot of other toys out there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please put down below what other types types of toys you think are worth the money because I would love to hear your ideas and your thoughts and I'm always looking for toy ideas that I think, you know, toys that are actually gonna be beneficial to my kids. So put those down below so I can hear from you and give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next time.